Today, I'm going to start a small thing on, we're going to talk, we're going to spend several weeks looking at this section of the NFPA 72 chapter 17. This is 1775, which is smoke detectors for control of smoke spread. Today, we're going to look at smoke detectors used for uh, air ducts for the smoke spread, so duct detectors. Then we're going to spend, I don't know, a week or two looking at the NFPA 90A because I think you'll be surprised how little is actually mentioned in the 72 about what we do with duct detectors, their mounting requirements, when they're required or not required and all that. That's not covered very well in the 72. It basically just says, look at the 90A, which is a whole nother code book. Uh, so I'll, I'll do a little bit out of the, the 90A so that we actually have a good understanding of when, what type of duct detector, how many duct detectors and that kind of thing are required. And then also covered in this same chapter that covers the use of duct detectors, covers the use of smoke detectors for um, fire doors, like we see sometimes with elevator lobbies and some high-rise buildings. Uh, sometimes we see them in schools whenever the we have the, the door holders that hold open the doors normally, but whenever there's an alarm, they shut the door so that you have different smoke compartments and that kind of thing. That's all covered in this as well, so I'll probably do a separate video just on the, uh, the use for the door releasing. And that's not to do with mag locks or security grill type of doors. That's only doors that'll control smoke spread. I'll, I'll go ahead and move on again today. We're just going to be focusing on duct detectors in this section of the chapter. So there's a few classifications for the, the smoke detectors that are used for the, for the preventive smoke spread. Uh, smoke detectors are installed and used to prevent smoke spread by initiating control of fans, dampers, doors, and other equipment shall be classified in the following manner. And then we have the three ways it can be classified. There are area detectors that are installed in the related smoke compartments. There are detectors that are installed in the air duct system. And then there's also video image smoke detection that is installed in related smoke compartments. Again, today we're just going to be focusing on that second one, the detectors that are installed in the air duct system. And when we look at that, we look at the purpose of these is to prevent the recirculation of dangerous quantities of smoke a detector approved for air duct use shall be installed on the supply side of an air handling system as required by NFPA 90A and Chapter 17, 75421, which I then copied and put directly below this. A supply air system. When the detection of smoke in the supply air system is required by other NFPA standards, a detector or detectors listed for the air velocity present and that is located in the supply air duct downstream of both the fan and the filter shall be installed. And this is basically all the 72 tells us about when and where to install a duct detector. There's uh, mounting requirements and that kind of thing that we're going to get into in a minute. But notice this doesn't talk about like the 2000 CFM that we always look at. It doesn't talk about the return side right here. There's another little paragraph in there about the return side that basically just says, when required by the NFPA 90A, you put a duct detector in the return side. And that's like all that that little paragraph says. So over on the right, I put a picture up of an AHU that shows what the supply and the return side of the unit are, because this can often get confusing. You know, we're not mechanical contractors, so sometimes you may forget which one's supply, which one's return. I know I get guilty of it from time to time. So the way I remember it is the supply side is supplying cold air to the building and its occupants, and the return air is the returning air back to the unit so that it can resupply it. So again, we're talking about supply air system duct detector, so that would go over here on this blue side, and it has to go before it branches off, but it doesn't even say that for us right here. So I'm getting ahead of ourselves with our other videos. So now we get to look at the location and installation of detectors in air duct systems. We have air duct detectors shall be installed in such a way as to obtain a representative sample of the airstream. This installation shall be permitted to be achieved by any of the following methods. We can rigid mount a, a smoke detector inside of the duct. I have a, a picture diagram, I'll show that in a minute. We could also rigid mount to the wall of the duct with the sensing element protruding into the duct. So th this is very similar to mounting to the ceiling of a building or to the wall of a building. Just now we're mounting to the ceiling of the duct or the wall of the duct. Installation outside of the duct with rigidly mounted sampling tubes protruding into the duct. This is the way we usually do it. And uh, there's a couple of reasons why. One is it's kind of the easiest, most straightforward and works most of the time better than any other way works and is easier to, to service and find and that kind of thing. And then the last one is installation through the duct with projected light beam. So this would be like a beam detector that is inside a duct instead of covering the whole room. 
So this slide here, I have those couple of pictures. The, the picture on the right-hand side would be the rigid mounting. You see they have a pendant coming down with the conduit that would serve the wire into it with our electrical box. And the detector is mounted on that so that it would sample the air as that air passes through, passes through that air duct. Also notice there on the side, they had to cut out a, a space and put a, an access door there that says smoke detector access. Um, I'm about to show you on the next slide. It's actually code required if you have a detector mounted in there like that and it's somewhere that's not otherwise accessible. You have to provide a door for access. So if we were going to use uh, this type of way of detecting stuff, we would have to then start modifying the mechanical contractor's air duct and they're not going to like that very much. They're not that's going to get into warranty issues for people and all kind of other stuff. The, the way on the left-hand side is how we always do it with the duct detector housing and the sampling tubes that protrude through the duct. And that is, uh, that's one that's much easier to do. We just have to drill the couple holes, put the sampling tube in, make sure the sampling tube is facing the right way. And then we have the, uh, the return tube that also faces back in there. And I want to talk about that for a second. So looking at this, we see the air is flowing this direction and we see the sampling tube has these perforated holes in it, which if you've ever installed a, a duct detector and sampling tube, you'll know what I'm talking. You'll have seen that before. And we have to make sure those holes face this way so that as the air blows through the duct, it'll blow into those sampling tubes. But if all we did was that, and we just had sampling tubes and it went to the, the duct detector housing, it, it wouldn't actually work. Nothing would happen. There's this exhaust tube here and see how there's a slant on it. You have to make sure this slant is facing with the high side of the slant on this side and the low side, the direction the air is going. Because what happens as the air passes over that, there's something called a Venturi effect and it creates a vacuum, creates a vacuum right here. So that as the air flows past it, it tries to draw air out of this tube to flow with it. And so that then is gonna transmit that vacuum being created here into the duct housing. The duct housing will be in a vacuum that can only be supplied by more air through the sampling tube. So if you just stick the sampling tube through the duct and you don't do anything else, you're not going to get very much airflow through it. But once you introduce this Venturi effect that comes by your exhaust, now you're creating a vacuum. So it's actually sucking air through that sampling tube. The only direction for it to go is across the smoke detector and then exhaust back into the, the air duct. And that's how they work. So it's very important that you get this exhaust side right, as well as the sampling tube side. And you always put the sampling tube side first so that the air hits the sampling tube, comes across your smoke detector, then out your exhaust, down your airflow. Because if you do it the other way, it, it still doesn't work right. You, you don't get that same uh, Venturi and vacuum effect. You, you don't get the accurate air sampling. Uh, also notice it says tube support hole for ducts more than, so more than 36 inches. So if you've got, you know, 37 inches or more, you have to drill a hole on the second side to feed your sampling tube through it. But if it's only 36 inches or less across, then you just put your plug in the end of your sampling tube and you, you make sure that it fits the whole width of the duct. And it's also important to make sure you have that hole plugged right here. Otherwise that vacuum's just gonna pull from this end, which might be poking out this side of the duct. You're not gonna get an accurate air sample of what's actually going through the duct. So putting that plug here forces the air to come in through your perforated side. But the, the last slide is a few more points I wanted to make sure we know about uh, duct detectors and some of the code requirements of mounting them. Uh, the first one is detectors shall be mounted in accordance with the manufacturer's published instructions and shall be accessible for cleaning by providing access doors or control units in accordance with NFPA 90A. So that's like that door that I showed you on the side of the duct they have to do, but we also have to make sure our duct detectors are somewhere accessible. So if it's a sheetrock ceiling, we might need to make sure that someone puts in an access hatch in the ceiling, be like, hey, this is, we're required to be able to get to this for service. The next part is the location of all detectors in the air duct system shall be permanently and clearly identified and recorded. So this would be as-builds. We have to make sure we're putting these kind of things on as-builds. Uh, our drawings that we have at the end of jobs, we need to be turning them in, and on them we need to mark exactly where the duct detectors actually were. Whenever I do the initial design, I try to get it close because there are mechanical drawings that show us a unit and show us mechanical ductwork going through the building, but sometimes those get changed throughout the job, sometimes something might get moved. I can't always be spot on perfectly accurate with every single unit. Sometimes something's going to change and we just have the duct detector as close to where the unit is as possible. So if you had to put the duct detector somewhere else, say I've got the unit shown in the mechanical room, but the duct detector actually had to go in the hallway outside the mechanical room, that needs to be reflected on our as-builds. This last point here, 
all penetrations of a return air duct in the vicinity of detectors installed on or in an air duct shall be sealed to prevent entrance of outside air and possible dilution or redirection of smoke within the duct. So this is talking about like where our duct detector housing meets up to the duct itself. We need to seal it off somehow so we can get like that aluminum duct tape that they, they use. That would be uh, probably the best way to do it right there. Because what happens is that vacuum venturi effect we're talking about, uh, that can get messed up if it's not sealed up right. The way the smoke spreads, it might start leaking around that instead of going into the duct detector housing itself. And so by sealing off the edges of where that detector housing meets up with the duct torque itself, by sealing that up, we're creating the, the only way for the air to go is by flowing across the smoke detector itself. So there's a couple other small bits and pieces in there. Like I've said in videos past, I'm not putting every single line of code into these videos. I'm putting the ones that I think are most applicable to us. And hopefully that helps familiarize you with what's going on in the code so that when you do open it to study yourself for the, the NYSED exam or whatever it is you're studying it for, hopefully it's given you some familiarity. You know where to turn to, to be like, okay, okay. Yeah, I remember this is with that and this is what that means. And so it won't be the first time you're hearing it. But I, I want you to know there is more to it than just this. This is meant for introductory purposes. And uh, like I said, I'm going to follow up with a couple more videos of related topics. So we'll go over the door control with smoke detectors. We'll go over what the NFPA 90A says about some of these duct detector systems mounting requirements and when they actually are or are not required. That's all I got for y'all today. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a little bit shorter. We're out a little bit earlier. I'll hang out if y'all have any questions, and if not, then y'all are free to go.